Hello, good evening. Welcome to News 360. It's coming to you live from our news up here at Adesawe in Kanda. I am Aisha Yakubu. And my name is Alfred Okansi. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. United Nations alarmed by recent political violence in Ghana. And police service announced closure of major roads in Kumasi ahead of Akwesi Daikesi, which climaxes 20th anniversary celebrations of Asante. On mission tonight, allegations of corruption rock crunchy in Chumuru district over disbursement of disability common fund. And in business tonight, fuel prices up by 2% across some major OMCs. On the international front, at least 13 people dead, with many injured after war collapsed in South Africa at the start of an ISA service. We have details of these and several other stories coming up, including sports and entertainment, in the next one hour. Stay with us. We're getting to the stories. Remember, we're live on DSTV channel 279 all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Now, they sit under excessive heat to provide health care. Patients who report to the facility go through the same trauma. Evelyn Tengma reports patients and staff of the Medina Polyclinic Kekele go through such harsh conditions in the makeshift containers with zinc roofing sheets. You can call it a container plaza, and you will not be wrong. Apart from the outpatients department, all other departments are container structures. The polyclinic attracts patients from Medina and adjoining communities, including Adenta, Agbogba, and Akshoman. The facility attends to more than 200 patients daily, creating congestion, particularly in the outpatient department, recovery and maternity wards. We are at the OPD section as well as the vital area and this is where patients come in to see the doctor, which is the consulting room that is here. Now, this particular place is very, very hot, I must say. And we have a couple of fans that have been fitted here because of the hot nature of this place. The OPD section is also used as a detention place because these patients here have been detained and they have been asked to sleep on the benches because the beds in the recovery ward are not enough for them. This standing fan is a source of comfort for nurses here, but they always have to sacrifice for patients. Staff often have to improvise for consulting and other administrative work in the open space outside. Another structure for the X-ray department is unoccupied because the polyclinic has no radiographer. The facility lacks a theater, compelling staff to constantly refer patients. Management and staff were tight-lipped for fear of victimization, but some spoke on condition of anonymity. In this small room, we have procurement manager sharing the office with the administrator, HR, uh, typist, um, assistant, health administrator, and then two national personnel, one local. You come to the room, suppliers are sharing the office with us 24 hours. All the documents are here. There is a line on the floor. Look at my procurement register. They are all on the floor here. Look at it. Look at my height. Look at the space I have here. We are now fed up. We have been told that no, we shouldn't send any patient away. So when the patients come, whether there is space or not, and they need to be admitted, we admit them. They lie on benches. We have sometimes we put just mat a mattress on the bench and the patient will lie there. We give infusions hanging on uh, windows. You understand? So all that we want is our building. There is a new build project ongoing, but it has taken too long. It's about seven, eight years now. So all that we are asking those that are concerned about the building is they should complete our building for us. 
the facility in 2018 recorded 1,300 deliveries, yet the maternity ward lacks space and beds. Not only if it is an emergency, those on the bed, we let them get down and sit so that we put the, the severe case on the bed. We have such case, somebody was lying on this particular bed and they brought a pregnant woman with sudden collapse from the house. So we have to let that one get up so that we put the collapse woman on the bed and start uh, resuscitating that person. And our catchment area to those who came normally don't have enough funds. If it comes to referral, we'll be stranded. At times we go around each ward begging for people to give hands a contribution. The nurses, patient relatives, will contribute so that we can pay for the ambulance fee and transfer the person to the higher facility. The recovery and emergency wards have only seven beds. While the heat is a major setback on sunny days, the rains are no better. Work in most departments often have to come to a halt anytime there is a downpour because roofs leak badly. This is the building or the structure that staff of the Medina Polyclinic Kekele are calling for its completion. Now, this structure, we are told, has been left here for several years, yet staff and patients of the clinic go through or stay in that particular heat in there. According to our sources at the La in Kwantanang Municipal Assembly, the project was started by the Gang East Assembly, but it now falls under La in Kwantanang after the carving out of the new municipality. The sources say there are two contractors working on the project, but the Assembly does not owe them, indicating the last payment of 200,000 cities was made in December last year. We were told the contractors had asked for pre-financing from the assembly to complete the project, but the assembly said it is guided by the Public Management Act and will not dole out public funds for no work done. The sources said the assembly has issued the contractors warning letters to complete the work or risk losing the contract. Everything ma, TV3 News, Accra. Away from that, the 37th branch of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, is accusing the La District Police of harassment and extortion. The drivers claim that police, uh, the MTTD, arrest and extorts monies from them due to the absence of bus stops around the, church, the trade fair site. But the La Police denies the claims, blaming the drivers of converting unapproved areas into lorry parks. Here's a report by Peter Kwawadato. Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, alleged there were about five bus stops between Palm Wine Junction and T Junction. Unfortunately, these were eliminated in the re-engineering of the hitherto one-lane giraffe road into a dual carriage. The absence of the designated bus stops has created inconvenience for both passengers and drivers, leading to sometimes heated arguments. As a result, the drivers say they were compelled to stop at various bus stops, which have been eliminated from the engineering, to alight and pick passengers. And this is where their woes started. The drivers say the La Police take advantage of the no stopping signs to arrest and extort money from them on daily basis. If somebody bought your car, you have to stop for the person. You can't take the person away. And then if you stop there, police arrest you that there's no parking there. Maybe if you are lucky, they get something from you and then leave you. Two drivers testified about their experience in March. They claimed the police escorted them to the office in La Town because they had refused to give in to their demands initially, an action the drivers regretted. Isaac and Ernest told us they were forced to pay 1,200 and 1,500 cities before their vehicle. Apologize for that um, hitch there, but let's go to the Ashanti region. And uh, three persons have been arrested for selling prepaid electricity meters to consumers in Kumasi. The suspects are currently in police custody.
The arrest followed a tip-off that some individuals were selling meters embossed with logos of the electricity company of Ghana in parts of Kumasi. The suspects were named as Tampoli Bakun, Paul Asori, and Aisha Abubakar. A fourth suspect, Ms. Bao Abubakar, is on the run. Ashanti Regional Public Relations Manager of the Power Distribution Services, Erasmus Shre Beidu, explained how the three were nabbed. The, the first uh, person who was arrested happened to be someone who has been selling meters. When we got information, our prosecution unit feigned interest and uh, got ready to buy one. So they managed to arrange and got this guy who had been selling the meters to come up. So when he came and uh, they paid for it, they took the, the, the meter and caused his arrest. He said the PDS is currently battling with a 15% revenue loss. If we're able to reduce commercial losses, I mean the whole country, everybody will be happy because the monies will go back to the producers. Now, the police have announced the closure of some major roads in Kumase ahead of the Akwesida Kese on Sunday, which also climaxes the 20th anniversary celebrations of the Asantehe. The closure is to ensure free flow of traffic and instill security as dignitaries from Ghana and other parts of the world make their way to the Minsha Palace for the celebration. Here's a report by Benjamin Edu. The Akwesidae Kese will climax activities marking the 20th anniversary of the Asantehene on his ascension to the Golden Stone. President Ikufuado and all three former presidents of Ghana will join other dignitaries from within and outside Ghana to celebrate with the Asante King. Forty diplomatic corps members are expected to attend this important ceremony where rich Asante culture will be on display on Sunday. The Asantehene is expected to be carried in a palanquin from Apijafie to Menshia Palace. TV3 visit to part of Kumasi Metropolis and the Menshia Palace indicate readiness for the big event. Billboards of the Asantehene have been mounted at vantage point within the city and the palace has been adorned in the yellow, green and gold colors of Asanteman. Key roads within Kumasi will be blocked. Affected streets include Dr. Mesa to Menshia Palace, Airport Runabout to Menshia Palace, Asuasi Market area to Menshia Palace, among others. Motorists plying the Ashtown, Imbrum, Swami Runabout to Imbrum, Kejetia to Imbrum will also be affected. Leaders of the event planning committee spoke about their readiness for the event. On the 26th of uh, this month, I think the president of Ghana intends to honor our king. Then, after that, you know, Otumfo was installed on 26th April 1999. That is precisely why the president has chosen that day to give him that great honor. Much as we were expecting very prominent dignitaries, we all thought that we we'll also still go through you to appeal to the general public and the Kumasi uh, inhabitants as to what is expected of us and what is supposed to do. This is what we've ruled out, that there will be the need for roadblocks, because in, mindful of the expected huge number that is coming, there should be a need for us to have several accesses. And also we are re-emphasizing that we'll create parking lots for these uh, inconveniences. The Ashanti Regional Police Commander, DCOP Kwesi Mensaduku, assured of adequate security during the event. As security services, we are mindful of our duties and responsibilities before, during and after the celebration. So the police, together with the military and other security services, are put in place measures to ensure that there will be an incident free before, during and after the celebration. Well, let's stay in the Ashanti region now. Go live to uh, the region where the regional capital, specifically uh, where Nanakwe Kwe Duyahusa presidential correspondent is standing by. 
uh, to have a chat with the traditional historian about Sunday's Akwesedai Kese and why you should make some time to join us. And of course, if you can hear me, just take it over and let's hear what you have. Alfred, and uh, over the past uh, few days, cultural and traditional activities have been happening here in the Ashanti region. And we know exactly how it is, uh, the way that people here uh, take their culture. And significantly, what will happen on Sunday is that there will be a gathering of chiefs and dignitaries across the world and uh, within uh, the country as well. Uh, but uh, who knows better than uh, one historian uh, here or Safo uh, Kantanka to tell us more. Uh, kindly come and tell us exactly what you expect on Sunday. Uh, a lot of activities have happened uh, over the week, uh, but how significant is this Akwesidae? I mean, we've been celebrating Akwesidae. How significant is this one, the Sunday's one, and how different it is from all others? Well, this very Akwesidae is coded Grand Akoside, a big Akoside. Why is it so? It is so because the, uh, within the Akan calendar, there are nine Akosides within a year. We also have nine Aukude within a year. These are the Ade. We have the Aukude and then we have the Akoside. The Aukude is said to be a small Ade and the Akoside is said to be a big Ade. But the Akoside Kasia is bigger. So that uh, one of the Ades, which is Akwesidae, is selected within the year and made rather very big, where a lot of dignitaries are invited from uh, within and outside the country. So that is what makes it a bigger Ade. Now we know the Ashantis don't really play with their culture uh, in terms of what they do, the colorful uh, nature of it and how significant it is. But tell me, are we ex going to explain only the Ashanti culture or probably there will be other cultures across the country intertwined on Sunday? Yeah, as uh, much as I know and uh, as far as Ade Kessie or Akoside Kessie is concerned, um, the calendar is such that people are invited from all over the world to pay homage and in so doing they perform their type of culture. So it's all, it's all going to form part of what is going to happen uh, on the Ade, or the big Ade. So we're expecting, I mean, cultural activities, colorful uh, aspect of what, what do you have in, in, in Ashanti region, isn't it? Yes, because uh, um, the days gone by, some of these cultural activities have already taken place. And we have seen the activities uh, conducted by people from Volta region, people from the northern region, people from um, Ivory Coast, people from Benin in, and Nigeria. They have already performed some of the activities and it, we are still expecting more tomorrow. Thank you very much for speaking to us, uh, historian, cultural historian, that Osei uh, Bonsu Safo Kantanka, uh, telling me exactly what uh, we should expect on Sunday. But I can tell you, keep your dial here on TV3 because, look, we'll be bringing you up to speed minute by minute event from tomorrow uh, till Sunday. So let your dial be here and uh, see exactly what we have for you. Uh, back to you, Alfred and Aisha. Fantastic. Uh, there is our presidential correspondent live from the Mensha Palace in Kumasi. So stay with us. As he said, every detail of that celebration will be live here on TV3, Onia 95.1 FM, Connect FM 97.1 and 3 FM 92.7, Akuma FM in Kumasi as well on 3news.com. Thanks for joining us on Mission. In Mission this evening, the Krachi and Chumuru Disability Association in the OT region suspects corruption in the disbursement of the Disability Common Fund. Secretary to the association, Emmanuel Kwekumensa, said the fund has not benefited many people. Section 1, Acts 455 of 1993 establishes the District Assembly's Common Fund 
and makes provision for 3% to be mandatorily be allotted to persons with disability. In the Krachi in Chumno district, for instance, there are more than 1,000 registered persons with disability. But records at the district social welfare department indicate that about 400 have benefited from the fund. We may not be able to capture everybody. They made some funds available in 2017 for that purpose of reaching everybody. So we created an album. The album is to know the, the type of disability that we have. The Area Disability Association is worried about this development. They alleged, although government ensures prompt quarterly release of the District Assembly Common Fund, disbursement to beneficiaries is always a challenge as the process is characterized by what they termed as unnecessary delays. We go to them. When we go, we are given excuses. The Auditor General has recommended all funds sitting in account of PWDs should be disbursed before the start of a new year. But this was not the case of the Krachi in Chumuru District Assembly. Last year, for instance, information available indicates that only one quarter was disbursed to beneficiaries, with the remaining quarters sitting in the PWD's bank account, as at March this year. Secretary to the Krachi Injumru Disability Association, Emmanuel Kwekumensa, said, Persistent follow-ups to get the assembly to disburse the fund to fellow beneficiaries have not been successful. He told the mission team, he suspects corruption on the part of some stakeholders in charge of the disbursement. The Disability Common Fund, which is 3% of the District Assembly Common Fund, is partitioned into three. 10% goes into the discharge of administrative duties. 10% also caters for the educational and health needs of PWDs, while 80% is disbursed to beneficiaries. And this is where the association suspects corruption. If you go to market and buy a comb, maybe 5,000, and then you give it to a procurement officer, and they say uh, some other things, even some of the items are not there, 7,000. It doesn't speak well. So what the, the aim of the government is to make sure that the right things are done. And if this goes on, I don't think it, it will defeat the aim of the government. So you, you suspect corruption? Uh, uh, yes. He again accused the assembly of patronizing inferior goods for beneficiaries. And most of the times, with the procurement, when they go to buy, some of the items are not in good use. So we mentioned about two or three of them are still there. Because so, I think either it is spoiled or I don't know. But the Krachi in Chumru District Social Welfare Director. Norbert Oklusenio disputed the allegations, attributing the delay to newly introduced procurement processes. The government has introduced a, a new system called GIFMIS. And then if you look at the, the process, it's a bit uh, lengthy. Without the approval from the system, nothing goes on. He said those who have benefited from previous funds have had their lives impacted. The Disability Association wants a broader stakeholder engagement on the Disability Common Fund. Stanley Nibleu, TV3 News, Chinderi, Krachi Inchumru, Oti Region. And that's it for Mission Tonight. Remember, Mission is brought to you by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid, and the EU. You're watching News 360. We're also live on DSTV Channel 279. After the break, we have more news for you. Please stay with us. Welcome back to News 360. Let's get into the world of business now. And senior researcher at Energy Think Tank Institute of Energy Security, Megdad Mohammed, has indicated that prices of petroleum products will rise steadily in the current pricing window despite the city doing well. Uh, he predicts that if there are no disruptive activities on the world market, there will be a reduction in the pricing window. 
Some oil marketing companies have increased prices of petroleum products at the pumps by about 2%. Some fuel stations monitored by TV3 reveal that a gallon of petrol is selling at 5 CDs 90 pesos, up from 5 CDs 70 pesos. Some oil marketing companies have kept prices unchanged, a situation analysts say may be as a result of maintaining market share as part of the deregulation policy. Most OMCs are likely to take advantage of the window to make up for previous depressed margins. Lead researcher at the Energy Think Tank Institute for Energy Security, Megdad Mohammed, noted that the rise in the prices occurred irrespective of the 2.5% appreciation of the Ghana city against the dollar under the period of review, which covers the first pricing window of April 2019. This particular pricing window, which is the April 2nd uh, pricing window, what we are seeing largely is uh, influenced by the international markets. Mm. You know, over the past couple of weeks, there have been a lot of drama on the international market, not only about Trump's tweets, mm. but also mm. about uh, some crisis in Libya. Mm. And then the, the sanctions against Iran has taken full force. Countries are not willing to now be buyers of Iranian oil. Venezuela has had a couple of outages, which has affected its production by about 289,000 exactly, dollars per, per, per barrel. Mm. And Saudi Arabia, for the past two weeks, also cut down production by about 390,000 barrels per day. Megdad Mohammed says Ghanaians will have to endure the situation until a possible reduction in the next pricing window. Previously, the discussion on fuel price increments has been contingent on the, the wobbly uh, relationship between the city and the dollar. Uh, in uh, August 2018, September, October, November, when we had those increments, they were largely because of the forex relationship, the city has been weak against the dollar. Mm. But uh, consumers will be wondering how come we are going to pay more for fuel when the city has made a very good showing against the dollar for the past couple of weeks. Well, it is not only the forex that determines the movement of fuel prices. Mm. The reason why, largely, at a, as an institute, we always uh, focus a discussion on forex is because it is one factor of price a movement that we can mm. we have a control over. Mm. For example, when uh, uh, there is a general in Libya who is launching an attack on triple. Yeah. The government of Ghana cannot do anything about that. On the local fuel market performance with the first pricing window, IEA said some OMCs revealed their prices downwards to maintain market shares, while largely prices stayed unchanged. The situation is five cities, 90 pesos is what some major oil marketing companies are selling a liter of fuel. But then if you look at the forex market, what a city is looking at carefully now is about five cities, 12 pesos to a dollar is what the city is trading at uh, on the interbank market. It would vary at the various forex bureaus that you visit. But the Ministry of Trade and Industry has cautioned exporters against compromising on the quality of their products if they are to attract and sustain international patronage. Our ministry warned exporting substandard products in a globally competitive business environment will dent the image of Ghana and adversely affect the market base of the exporters. The Ministry of Trade and Industry is building the capacity of entrepreneurs in the share, fruits, vegetables, crafts and garment sectors of the Ghanaian economy. A seminar on trade for sustainable development exposed the businesses to available market opportunities and procedures for exporting their products. Ashanti Regional Manager of Trade, Mahmouda Usman, described the export sector as key in government's industrial transformation agenda. He said the ministry is working on initiatives to boost production of export products to stimulate economic growth. It is important to note that developing local product for export will help stimulate economic growth and also create more jobs. The Trade for Sustainable Development Initiative by the International Trade Center aims at assisting SMEs to implement green business practices for sustainable economic growth. Deputy Chief Executive of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, Emmanuel Dentu, called on actors in the export space to move towards sustainable production and consumption. It is imperative that producers, manufacturers and actors in the export space, including consumers, move towards sustainable imperative. 
Sustainable and Inclusive Value Chains Chief at ITC commended the business community in Ghana for adding value to their products. She, however, noted that good environmental health should be a component of business growth. Business growth should promote improvements in the well-being of workers and communities while maintaining the health of the environment around us. Similarly, ignoring the cost of climate change is not an option for long-term business growth. Thank you very much. Bye. Well, that's it for business tonight. And there's more business news on 3news.com. Thank you, Alfred. Let's do some more stories now. The United Nations has pledged support efforts spearheaded by the National Peace Council aimed at finding a lasting solution to political vigilantism in Ghana. The UN Secretary General's Special Representative for West Africa and Sahel, Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambers, who made this known at a lecture in Accra, was hopeful the parties would reach a consensus. The United Nations Secretary General Special Representative and Head of the United Nations Office for West Africa, Andy Sahel Unowas, was the main speaker of the Council on Foreign Relations Ghana Second Distinguished Guest Public Lecture Series in Accra. He noted the United Nations is concerned about the growing threat of terrorism, political violence, as well as political vigilantism in the West African sub-region and the Sahel. Dr. Ibn Chambers maintained the violence that erupted at the Ayaso Wells were gone by election in January once again amplified the phenomenon of political vigilantism in Ghana. He however proposed that relevant stakeholders must be made to see elections for what they are, simply a battleground for ideas, policies and programs. Not a situation to instigate and foment hatred and violence against opponents and communities. A life lost during an electoral period is a death too many and undercuts the very essence of participatory democracy and governance. He lauded efforts by the National Peace a fasting solution to the menace and pledged his outfit support. In order to sustainably respond to the phenomenon of vigilantism void of partisanship, the United Nations remains committed to lend its support to the ongoing national efforts led by the National Peace Council and remains hopeful that all parties will participate in reaching a consensual agreement in comprehensively addressing this phenomenon. On elections in the West African sub-region, the UN Secretary General Special Representative for West Africa, Andy Sahel, lamented the winner-takes-all attitude as the root cause of electoral violence in the sub-region. We cannot be oblivious to the fact that the winner-takes-all attitude towards elections as maintenance of power becomes the ultimate avenue for patronage, have increased the stakes in electoral processes, making them a major source of pre- and post-election related violence. The West African sub-region would witness at least five general elections, including that of Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, come 2020. Dr. Ibn Chambas urged all countries going to the polls to emulate the Nigerian and Senegal success story. There's also in Niger, in Togo, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Burkina Faso, in Guinea. And some of these could be fairly contentious. But our expectation is that they all follow the trend emerging in the region of peaceful, participative, uh, credible elections. He added that regardless of the might and resources of any given country in the region, peace and security cannot be underwritten by a state alone, but by the collective effort of state and the collective will and involvement of the populace. The lecture was on the theme, an agenda for building partnerships for peace in West Africa and the Sahel, challenges and opportunities. So live here on News 360, remember we're live on DSTV channel 279, all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Stay with us, there's more news coming up.
Thanks for staying with us in entertainment news this evening. The congregation at the St. James Catholic Church in Osu marked Good Friday with a reenactment of Christ's journey to the cross. The dramatic retelling of the suffering and death of Christ was to remind believers to love one another, adhere to the teaching of Christ, and turn away from sin. <laughs> As various churches marked the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the St. James Catholic Church in Osu was not left out. Reenacting the Passion of Christ, the Good Friday Church service reminded the congregation of the suffering and pain Christ endured to atone for the sins of mankind. The arrest, trial, painful beating, whipping, and mocking of Christ did not only get people teary, but reflected and prayed for forgiveness of sins. Some could not control their emotions as they watched Christ being beaten and getting nailed to the cross. This is a period of praying. You have to meditate a lot, especially on your sins, the recurrent ones, and how to do away with it. Because today, it brings home more forcefully that every time you sin, you are whipping Jesus or you are crowning him with thorns. I wept throughout for my own sins that I have committed. So the impact is very, very positive. And I always pray that any time I do these Stations of the Cross, may God help me to be a better person. Reverend Father Daniel Teteji is the parish priest at the St. James Catholic Church. As in Paul would say, our homeland is in heaven. So when we live in this world, we know that we are just making a journey. So watching the reenactment is to help us record that truth. So that living in this world, we know that everything we see in this world, we cannot carry along when we die. It will be left behind. So the need for us to therefore build our treasures in heaven. Francis Agujan played Jesus in the sketch. Well, before I, we started the play, I prayed that whatever he went through, God would make me go through that. Like he should send his angels to guard me and help me play this role right. For the crying scenes and everything, it just it just happens. I don't force tears. It just happens. Because if I don't do that, then it means I'm not living the role right. Two youngsters, Aaron and Julian, were touched by the sorrowful story. I felt sad and I recognized that if we were back in the olden days where the real thing happened, we would be crying by now because they are killing our saviour, the one who was the one who saved us from our sin. So it's not it's not fair because he didn't do any crime and he was hung on the cross. So I think we should worship him more and we can we can be grateful to him and give thanks to him. I think this is good, you know, re the reenactment and uh, bringing mm -hmm. to life the story of Easter. It's quite you know. interesting. Why are you looking at me so just so, so suspiciously like that? Yeah. Do not sin is what the story is saying. Uh, uh, Do absolutely. Not sin. That's, that's, the, that's a message we're, we're mm. going with, yeah. you know. So um, the, the message for Easter is that we should remember the death of Christ, the resurrection, and the relevance in our lives in, in both ways. So um, let's see what's happening on 3news.com. It's, uh, it's a lot happening mm -hmm. right there, as you see on screens. So the That's top headline news. out there. Mm. Absolutely. So make some time and visit 3news.com for all the news in Ghana, on the continent, and across the world. And that's all the news we have for you this evening. Thanks so much for your company. My name is Aisha Yakubu. My name is Alfred Okansi. Happy Easter. <laughs>